After you've finished your visual novel, it's time to export it. But before we do that, I'm going to address two questions that a couple people have had on the Discord server. Um, and if you don't know where that is, I'll leave a link to that in the description in case anyone else wants to join in. But one of the questions was how to use the input field to save a main character name. And I was looking through the code a second ago and it looks like I may have already done this or gone briefly over it. When, when we're saving the player name, when you come into your game file where we save all of the data, including our chapter progress and the speakers, the backgrounds, the music, everything that we save and load, you want to make sure that you have a string for the player name. This string is going to save the value from the input fields, from the input screen's input field, rather, and save it into this string. By default, it's going to be blank. Now, the way we actually save this in our actions, since we're going to be doing this through the chapter file, we want to make sure that we have an action for saving the player name. Uh, something like save player name is just fine for the action. And what, we're, what I'm going to do is pass in the input screen's current input. So this command here is something that I made, and let me just come down to that so you'll know what I'm talking about. It is command save player name, save player name right here. All right, yeah, see, that is literally all it is. We're just setting the player name in our game file, this value up here, just setting that to equal whatever string is passed in. And the string that was passed in is the input screen current input. That will always be what is currently in the input. So then if I come down to my chapter file, if I have something simply like this, input, what is your name, it's going to trigger the input screen, and immediately afterwards if I call that save player name, then it's going to save the value of the input field into that string. So let's take a look at that real quick. There we are, what is your name? I'm going to populate it. enter and it's going to me immediately save that value there we go from this point forward your name is at what you set and continue forward and in here if we even use it as the name of the speaker then we can set it as the speaker name as well just like that Avira my name is Avira all right that takes care of that okay so there you go that's how you'll be saving your name like that the next question, and this one was a very popular one that kept coming back over and over again. This was, especially when you export your game and you're trying to load files, uh, people have said that once they do that, they're no longer able to find their chapter files once they go to play the game. The files aren't loaded, they don't get any dialogue or anything, and this is because uh, more than likely they are still using the file manager to try to load that, but they should be using resources. So let me come up into the novel controller where this actually happens. When we load the chapter file, uh, you may be doing something such as this, where we're using file manager dot load file and using the file directly through assets, resources, if you have a story file saved inside of resources, you need to know that once a game is exported, the resources folder is going to be compiled. So it's no longer going to be something that you can navigate to inside of the file explorer, and you won't have a directory path like this anymore. So that's not going to exist after a build. If you're trying to use the file manager for this, it's not going to work. The file manager should be used for files that are built after the game is compiled and exported that's when that should be used. Instead, you want to use resources.load for anything that's inside of one of your resources folders. We'll use resources.load as a text asset and then pass in the name of the file we're trying to load. And that will always get you what you need to find as long as your path is correct. And while we're on the note of file paths, if you're exporting your game then depending on which platform you're exporting it to, the application path is not going to be the same for the data inside, such as if we're in the editor, then everything's going to be inside of our assets folder. 
and that'll just be where you have your executable or the Unity application. It'll immediately look for the assets folder inside of that directory. However, once we export it, then that path's going to change a bit. So you want to make sure that you're using application.persistentDataPath. That, when used no matter what platform you export to, it's going to find the proper path to start looking for all the data inside. And this is just a simple compiler function that I added in. So if Unity Editor, meaning if we're inside of the editor while this code is running, then it's going to use this line. Otherwise, we're compiled and it's going to use this. That way I can use this both inside and outside of the Unity Editor without any issues. So that's how we incorporate those together. That's already inside of the file manager. So if you're using the file manager, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you're using your own, then you want to make sure that you include application.persistentDataPath to the beginning of any of your file searches. Now, when it comes to exporting your game, there are several areas that we want to look at. The first of which is going to be under Edit and Project Settings, where we can control the quality levels. I've actually gone in and deleted all the ones that I didn't need, but by default you'll probably have several of them in here. And if you want to delete them, just hit this little trash can icon, but you can see how you can customize how this will display in your game. You can set the texture quality, and all of this is much more useful for actual 3D or 2D games, not so much a visual novel. In visual novel, you just want to make sure your texture quality is at full resolution, and that maybe you're using a little bit of anti-aliasing. But for the most part, everything else here should be good for a visual novel. The next thing we want to look at is under File and Build Settings. And this is probably the most important part that we're going to be messing with. But before we go doing anything here, we want to go down to the Player Settings and customize a couple things of the actual executable file. So first of all, you'll have your company name. You can leave it as default if you want then the product name, the name of the application, and the version number, so that way you know which release it is. You can also set a default icon, and this is what's going to display on your actual executable file. So I've actually got a little icon here that I'm going to set as mine. There we go. You could also define a cursor if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave that blank. Inside of resolution and presentation, you've got a couple of areas that you can work with here such as here, full screen mode, you can decide whether it's full screen windowed, exclusively full screen, if it's just going to be maximized by default. In this run in background section, this is if someone minimizes your game or clicks outside of the game window, it'll still keep running. This was useful when I actually made a media player, and I wanted it to keep running in the background, so that's when I have that checked. Again, for the most part, all of these settings are actually going to be um, pretty much already set for what you need. You just want to worry about what's up here in the most cases. Splash image, if you're using Unity Pro, then you're not going to have any kind of splash image by default show up. But if you aren't, then you'll be seeing something like this when you first launch your application. But you can also customize additional logos if you wanted to. Say, if I wanted to add just some random Veronica head and item there. If we hit preview, you're going to see it's going to show that face and then move on to the next one. But that's, that's up to you whether you want to do any of that. I definitely don't. So I'm removing that. And if you're using Unity Pro, as I've said, then that you're not going to be forced to use any kind of splash screen there. And the best kind of splash screen you can use is something that you program yourself in an additional scene that loads on the first game launch. So let's actually head back into File and Build Settings and come into here and take a look at this. So you want to make sure that all of your scenes are included in this little rectangle here because this is what's going to be inside of your game build. Anything that you want any scene that you want to be accessed inside of the game needs to be listed here, otherwise it's not going to be found. And the way you can make sure of that is, first of all, if you have a scene in your little project here, then you can drag it inside and it'll automatically add it. You can also drag them inside this box to reorder them. And they also have an index over here, you'll see. This is so when we're using a scene manager to load scenes, then we can either load them by name, 
that's listed here or by index. And another way to add it is, say, if I did not have this novel scene open, since I'm currently working in it, have it open in my hierarchy over here, I could just hit Add Open Scenes, and it'll add it inside as well. Alright, so now down here under Platforms, this is where we're going to export to our target platforms, obviously. The, the default is going to be PC, Macs, and Linux. You also have Android down here, although you'll have to load a module for that if you don't already. Most of these things, I believe, you have to load separately. Uh, you can do this either after the fact or when you're installing Unity for the first time, because it gives you that option. I just went with PC, Max, and Linux, because that's the one that I normally work with. Your target platform, and then your architecture, if you're not sure what this is, x86 is just short, for, well, not really short, but it, it means 32-bit and then 64, 64 bit, so cross compatible, and most machines now are coming out 64 bit, so uh, that's the best one to go for. Uh, for a small game, it really wouldn't matter uh, if we went for 32 bit, so, but it is going to be compiling if we make that change, so just be aware of that. And for something so small like this visual novel, I could actually leave it as 32-bit, which I'm going to do here. I want to make sure it's not a development build. And everything else looks good, so if I go ahead and say build and run, then we're going to come up with a box here to say where we're going to save all of this stuff. So I'm going to say let's make a visual novel and new folder just going to call this underscore builds and here I'm going to create the folder for it so this is going to be visual well, let's be consistent right let's make a visual novel right here and that's where I'm going to save it so select folder and it's going to start compiling everything and building the player There we go, once it finishes we've got our configuration box here, so we can set up how we want to play it. If you don't want to see that, if you don't want to see any of this, and you just want it to launch with the, the settings that you want, there is a way to do that as well. And that is under Resolution and Presentation, Display Resolution Dialog. If you hit Disabled on that, then once you export your game and launch it, it's going to launch immediately. There we go. So now I can come down to my folder where it's located at. And first of all, we'll see our little icon there. And if I go ahead and click it, it's going to launch it. Well, that's the uh, wrong one. Let's go with the one that I just did for the no configuration menu. And when I launch this, it's going to immediately launch it. There we go. So now we have our game in an EXE format. If I do new game. It's still got my uh, default one there. Alright, well that's fine. This is just a demonstration. So with all of that taken care of, that presents us with a folder and all of the contents for our game. And that would mean that you would have to compress this into a zip file, upload where you wanted, people download it, unzip it. But uh, maybe you want it to be an actual installer file. So that way you have one application someone will download, they double click it, and it installs your uh, visual novel on their system. In that case, there is a way to do that, and I want to give a shout out to Brackies for this one, because he's the one who uh, revealed to me how to make this happen. So there's a tool to take all those folders and the executable and turn them into an install file, and it's called Eno Setup. Now if you're not sure where that is, it's inside, you can find it in your web browser at this link, which I'll leave in the description. Right now the version is 6.0.5, and you can download it right there. Once you run it and install it, and launch it, you'll have a screen that looks like this. So once we launch Eno Setup, we'll be greeted with a screen that looks like this. We'll have a welcome menu, and the option to create a new script using the script wizard, which is what we want to do to make the process easy. We'll go ahead and say no to that. Next. And here's where we define the features of our application. So the name is going to be, I'm going to put mine as my visual novel demo. 
the application version, same as what I put in Unity, so I'm gonna leave that as 1.0. The company, myself. And I don't have my web page up yet. I do have my YouTube, but I don't have the link on me, so I'll leave that blank. Next, I'm just gonna leave the destination folder in the program files folder, though you can change this and make it custom if you'd like. You can also allow the user to change the application folder. I'll say next, and this is what's really important here. This is where we're going to define where the main executable is. So we want to browse to the exe file that we compiled earlier. Mine is going to be in here, inside of series. Let's make a VN, backup, and builds, the no config version. And I'm going to choose the executable file right here. So there we go. Now, we'll want to add the data folders as well, and, and also the Unity player. But to make it easy and to make it work, because if we try to import all of them at once, once we compile it, uh, they're all the contents are just going to be spilled out inside of the folder with our executable, and then it's not going to be able to find anything. So we want to have them maintain this same directory format. So in order to do that, let's go into our explorer here and just right click new folder and just make a data folder. So I'm going to take this all of that along with the crash handler and the player and just move it into the data folder. There we go. And now let's go back into Eno setup, add a folder to, there we are, game development, Unity, make a VN right back to where we were, the builds, the no config, and let's add the data folder. This says if we want to include the subfolders, the files, yes, we do want to include that, so we'll say yes there. And that's what we need to make this game run. All right, so we'll go ahead and say next. We can say create a shortcut to the main executable in the common startup menu, which is typical for any install. You can uncheck that and then define some preferences here, but I'll leave mine checked. Um, creating a desktop shortcut, that is also pretty typical for an install, so I'll leave that as is. Now these little files here, this is just uh, some text information that's going to be shown in the installer itself while the user is installing your game. So this will be shown beforehand and this will be shown after. So I actually have a little TST text file that I'll have here that just simply says thank you for installing. So I'll leave that there, say next, and install mode, administrative install, language is English, and this my setup is uh, default but this is actually the name of your installer so I'm going to call mine stellar studio visual novel demo and you can set the icon of the installer but you'll need an icon file it's not like a PNG or a JPEG it's an actual icon file so you'll probably want a converter for that as well so set a password in case you want it to be password protected I'm just going to put mine as VN for a demonstration and say next. Now this isn't really important. This uh, just, it says up here, the define compiler simplifies the script to make it easier for you to make changes to it later on. I personally won't be making any changes to mine, so I could uncheck that if I wanted, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to say next, and once we hit finish, the script will be here. We'll go ahead and compile it, and then we're going to create the installer. So I'm going to say no because I have no need to save this script. And then we have our progress down here. It's estimating one minute to complete. So let's wait for that to complete. There we go. So it has finished. We get our little message down here that it's finished, how long it took. So we can go ahead and close that out. I do not need to save that. And by default, when we do that, it's going to save it into our documents folder, into a folder called output here. So if I go in there, then you can see I have my installer file here, Stellar Studio Visual Novel Demo. Now, I should also make mention that this is for PC and like any kind of computer that you're going to be installing it on. If you're doing it for Android, then you just export uh, with the Android settings and then import into your Android device. I don't have one to demonstrate on, but the process is fairly similar, only you're not creating this install file. This is just for computer, Mac, and Linux. All right, so if I go ahead, you can now take this, upload it to wherever you want. 
half the people download this, and once they run this, they'll be installing your application, like any other application on the machine. So let's go ahead and double click this. And it wants my password, since this is an administrative install. The password for the visual novel that I set earlier, VN, next. And that location is fine. I will create a desktop shortcut and all of that looks good so I'm going to say install. There we go. So now it has installed and it's showing my little file that I made. Thank you for installing the novel. So I can say next and we're through. So we finish it and then on my desktop I now have this icon. So if I just right click and where is it? Open file location. You can see this is all of the stuff that we imported. We've got our crash handler. We've also got an uninstall application. And we have our data that it's going to need. So all of that is good. If we just click this, then it launches our game. And yes, of course, Norton says it can't find a good signature. Because uh, I made it. <laughs> all right. Now, go back into that. There we go. So everything is running good. I'm gonna say new game. And yes, I never changed it to use the actual visual novel file. It's still using my test, but we can see that it works. So that's about all there is to talk about exporting your uh, game to an application. You should know that if you want to export to something like Xbox, PS4, or some type of Nintendo platform such as the Switch, you'll need to install the module for it, and also, I know definitely for Nintendo, you have to have a developer license for it. So you'll have to go to their web page, um, register for a license, and then once you have something to, I believe you have to have something to present to them, and then they'll decide whether they're going to... Uh, allow you to purchase a developer package which will let you create your game for that system. Uh, that's that's a whole nother process, something that uh, I'm not going to bother going into in this video, but just be aware that that, that is something that you will need to uh, be prepared for if you want to export to those platforms. But it is very possible. And that looks like that's all for right now. So, as always, if you have any questions, please post them down in the comments below. Um, you can also join my Discord because I hardly uh, hardly see the YouTube notifications. I don't always receive those, but I do check Discord quite frequently. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.